Okay, this sermon is entitled, Stupid Doctrine. I'd like to open up with prayer. And then with a few verses, all right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 144 reads, Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight, my goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him? or the Son of Man that thou makest account of him. Now when it comes to doctrine, I'm not really going to go over the damnable heresies out there. I'm going to give a cursory propedeutic when it comes to teachings like Calvinism, Arminianism, and Lordship. Basically all three of these isms teach people to put their faith outside of Christ and to trust in yourself. And it's all damnable heresy. But what I'd like to focus on right now is stupid doctrine. Doctrine that people believe for absolutely no reason. There's no underlying purpose in any of this doctrine. It's just to look stupid. Number one, the flat earth. Now, some people have asked the question, is this even a biblical issue? Well, it is because people have made it a biblical issue by positing that there are certain verses in the Bible that teach that the earth is flat. So I'm not really going to get into this other than just to basically say that this is just absolute stupidity. Number two, we have modalism. Now, modalism can be a very dangerous teaching if a person's not saved, but for the most part, I think the people that adopt this teaching are just stupid. Now, what is modalism? According to Theopedia, modalism is the unorthodox belief that God is one person with three different modes. In other words, instead of being all three aspects of the Trinity simultaneously, God can switch from one mode to the other. Like, for instance, during the Ascension, God would become the Holy Ghost. And this teaching basically postulates that Jesus Christ is the Father, that we should be baptized in the name of Jesus alone according to these oneness Pentecostal heretics. But the truth is, is that Jesus Christ is God, but he's not the Father. The Bible makes it very clear that Jesus Christ is the Son. Let's take a look at some verses on this. Turn over to Luke chapter 1. Let's take a look at verse 32 and it reads, He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Now turn over to John chapter 5. Let's take a look at verse 19 and it reads, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Verse 20, For the Father loveth the Son, and sheweth him all things that himself doeth, and he will shew him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. Verse 21, we, we keep seeing the distinction between the Father and the Son. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Verse 22, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So clearly there's a difference between the Father and the Son, and therefore Jesus Christ is not the Father. This teaching of modalism is just a bunch of stupidity, and there's absolutely no purpose for it. It's not going to affect anyone's salvation if they're already saved. Now, obviously, if they're not saved, that's a different story. But I just think that people are teaching this garbage to look studious, high-minded, and erudite. So let me go into my next teaching now, dispensationalism. Now, back in the day, I would have considered myself a dispensationalist, a Chaferian dispensationalist. But what I'm dealing with now is this garbage that people are teaching that in the Old Testament, salvation was by faith plus works. And in the ages to come, the millennial kingdom, tribulation, millennium, or whatever, it's the same thing. Now, I believe there's absolutely no reason to be teaching this either. Because nobody alive today is in the Old Testament dispensation. And I guess these people are just trying to fool the unsaved that will enter the ages to come and try to deceive them about the gospel. It's wicked as hell and it's garbage. So let's take a look at one verse that makes this clear that it doesn't matter what dispensation you're in, salvation is the same. Turn over to Romans chapter 4. Let's take a look at verse 13, and it reads, For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now, what we're dealing with now is Abraham from the Old Testament. He's saying that the promise of eternal life, same with the New Testament saints was not through the law. 
So all these stupid Robert Breakers and Gene Kims and these idiots and these fools that are teaching that it was law and faith, that refutes everything they had to say right there. How do you get saved in the Old Testament? Through the righteousness of faith. How are we saved in the New Testament? Faith in Christ. It's all faith. Okay, so I'd like to focus on my last stupid doctrine, and that is universalism. Now, universalism is very similar to Calvinism. The outcome of universalism and Calvinism is no evangelism, no need for evangelism. These people basically believe that God's going to save everybody in the end eventually. Now, this is garbage because why would we even have a gospel if everyone's going to be saved in the end? Why would we have volition or free will and why would we have the need for faith? It doesn't make any sense at all and it's a bunch of stupidity. Now, this could be absolutely dangerous if a person's not saved, but I believe that the people pushing this garbage are saved, most of them, but they're just lazy. They don't want to do any soul winning, and they want to cross their fingers behind their back and tap their feet and say they believe in fairies and just whistle while they work and hope that people will just be getting saved automatically or God's going to save everyone in the end. It's garbage. Turn over to John chapter 5. In John chapter 5, we have some verses that make it very clear that if you want to be saved, you have to come to Christ in faith. Let's start off with verse 38. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. So that's what it boils down to, whether or not a person believes on Christ. It continues in verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Does this say that every single person eventually will get eternal life? No, it's, he's telling people specifically and directly to search the scriptures. Verse 40 reads, And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. John 6.37 talks about those who come to him, he will in no wise cast out. You have to come to Christ in faith or you won't get eternal life. So universalism is not true. It's a bunch of garbage. It's a satanic lie. It basically just tells people not to worry about anything and that everyone will be saved in the end when it's our responsibility to tell people the gospel so that they can have faith in Christ, so that they can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So that's all I have. We need to watch out for this stupid doctrine, most of which is just there to waste people's time, to make people look like an idiot, and to supersede the truth. So that's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.